How do you bring focus to personal, social, and political chaos in your writing? I like to do that by actually humanizing people who are impacted by turmoil and chaos. And I like to do that by, you know, individual stories and sharing people's fears and their hopes and dreams shaped by events that have happened to them. So I suppose one of the things that I'm striving for is a kind of honesty that is at least uh, safer uh, in the in the between the pages of this book than the kind of honesty that I actually want to demand from the Canadian public. Do you know what I mean? Like I am trying to meet people where they're at, mm. and they're not necessarily ready to meet Megan Gale Coles in the street, who's right. going to demand that they stop lying to themselves about the things <laughs> that they do, because they don't deserve that. <laughs> That's unfair to them. They are just trying as well. I mean, we just we just done forty years of telling people that everything is about individual responsibility, right? Like if the climate is changing, it's because of your recycling habits personally. And Lies. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. So you know, the, the being able to to show where the system starts and where and where it ends and where the person picks up from there, I think, is like a profoundly political uh, uh, decision to make. My writing process is <laughs> incredibly messy. So I have a huge, like, nebulous manuscript, and I pull it apart and then look at all the pieces and try to see which one is the most effective. Um, so until I do that, until I focus myself, I can't really focus anyone else's attention. I like to take the reader and just drop them in the water, kind of like throw them in the ocean and make them swim. You are that uncle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think through, by just showing life, right, how yeah. it is that you can expose a lot of the violence of colonialism and the things that are happening in our country, as well as the good things. There are a lot of beautiful things in this country, too. And you can get to that minutia by just immersing people in worlds, right? And that's like our job as writers, or my job, I think. So. What is your role as a storyteller? I write and work on all these super abstract uh, technical issues that are boring and complicated, but super important. When you turn these abstract potential future harms into like stories where you're living in the skin of someone who's, who's in the world in which we fail to do anything about it, it, it helps make people understand what's at stake so that they can act before it's too late. And then as the problems start to arrive, it gives them a vocabulary for understanding it. You know, think of how often we use science fiction to talk about what's going on in the world. That's so Orwellian. My role as a storyteller is to bear witness. And that's a very specifically the Heisla Heltzik thing. When you were at a potlatch, your job as an attendee was to bear witness to the events and to to tell, to retell it to anybody who asked you truthfully. As the famous phrase goes, the pen is mightier than the sword. How do you wield this power? You know, I think science fiction is one of those genres that is really well poised to intervene in the world because it, it's like main gimmick is the contrafactual, like what would it be like if a thing were different? So what would Walmart be like if it were non-exploitative, right? What would uh, the internet be like if it were non-extractive? I think as someone who's gone through multiple systems, like the justice system, courts, rehabs, I think my um, the way to show that the, the pen is mightier than the sword is just to write about those every day experiences and expose them so people know and understand. And I think through that understanding that people are motivated to change, right? Where if I came out and I was angry about it, instead of just presenting it, I don't think it would have the same impact. So that's how I use the pen. What do you wish was easier about writing a book? It's like the thing that's very pragmatic and unglamorous and no one really wants to talk about is there's not enough money for writers to write. And there never has been. And there's less now than there was 10 years ago. And so that first draft is underfunded. Where do you get the time? Like I had 10, 12, maybe 15 jobs while I wrote Small Game Hunting. It was stressful. Yeah, and the older you get, the more you get sandwiched. 
Like, Sandwich. Yeah, you've got your kids, you've got your parents, you've got community responsibilities, you've got, yeah. I don't know, Jesse, if you can relate to this, but the psychological trauma that comes with like writing a really personal memoir. Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, you know, oftentimes also when I'm just talking about my book, sometimes I feel re-triggered. How do you guys even do readings? Like what it's tough. kind of a lot of self care, a lot of spa yeah. visits, a lot of playing with my cat. That's how I do it. I don't seeing know. Seeing your you therapist do. a lot. Well, yeah. I, I mean that's for, for me. That's my self care, just seeing my therapist a lot and say, Hey, this is like a you know, I feel a bit re triggered and like, yeah, I just need to talk about it and unpack. Interesting question. Will you be watching the Canada Reads debates? Why or why not? Are we watching it together? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to get competitive, Jesse? Yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to watch it, actually. Oh, dear God. <laughs>